Hello, I'm really pleased to welcome you to Caffrey Greenmount campus, which is only 20 miles from Belfast and halfway between the historic town of Antrim and Belfast International Airport. Greenmount opened its doors to its first agriculture students in 1912. It has grown considerably since then, with over 1,000 students now studying a range of courses. Veterinary nursing started in the 1990s, and we welcome over 50 veterinary nursing and animal care students each year. Greenmount really has superb facilities, and this combined with staff that have a very close association with the agri-food industry has led to Greenmount having an international recognised reputation for excellence. It isn't just the learning that graduates remember, but the lifelong friends and crack they had while they were students here. And that hasn't changed. Greenmount is a beautiful place to study, with a lot of investment in teaching and learning resources, and it doesn't stop there. Over the next number of years, there will be even more investment in new student accommodation and science facilities. Greenmount really is the place to be and has lots to offer, so welcome and I hope you enjoy our virtual event. Good evening everyone and welcome to our virtual event uh, for veterinary nursing uh, education courses delivered at CAFRI. My name is Manus McHenry, I'm Head of Agricultural Education. CAFRI uh, is an integral part of the Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. We have three campuses one at Enniskillen, which focuses on equine with a small provision in part-time agriculture courses. Lockery Campus, which fo focuses on food technology and postgraduate programmes. And Greenmount Campus, with a focus on agriculture, horticulture, floristry, land-based engineering and veterinary nursing. And the focus tonight of our virtual tour is veterinary nursing. And I'm joined tonight by Siobhan Shepherd. Sh Siobhan is course manager for veterinary nursing and will be helping me out as we work our way through the programmes. Uh, this is a live event, so please give me a thumbs up during the course of the evening. If you have any specific questions or queries that you would like answered, please be sure to post them up and we'll try to address those before our event has finished. OK, Siobhan, welcome this evening. Maybe you would like to give us a wee bit of background to uh, the courses on offer uh, at in, in veterinary nursing. OK. CAF, we offer two courses which we're going to cover tonight. The first one is a level two for veterinary care support. So that one year course really appeals to those people that are going to be working on a veterinary care uh, role, veterinary support, veterinary animal nursing assistant within a veterinary practice. The one year course is based on the students being taught one day a week where they would come to campus. Um, and then they would be also then volunteering or working in a veterinary practice across Northern Ireland for 18 hours a week. That course starts in September and finishes in June. It really covers those um, initial introductory skills needed for that member of staff to support the nurse and vet in practice. So the units covered would, would range from right from um, reception duties, anatomy and physiology, maintaining the animal's accommodation, feeding, watering, some nutrition. Um, it covers um, the four main species that are traditional pets to your dogs, cats, rabbits and guinea pigs. Okay, and in terms of the course itself, are there any fees associated with that level two programme? For that level two course, no, there's no fees for the students. Okay, and in terms of the qualifications required to come on to that course, uh, Siobhan? So the current uh, entry requirement are two C's or three D's, which must include English and maths, but okay. full details are on the website. Okay, and a typical day for a student uh, coming on to that course, what would that entail? So the, the the course, while they're on campus, will cover quite a bit of theory or underpinning knowledge, as we call it. So it's really the, the, the kind of the science and the understanding of why certain things are carried out a, a certain way. So it's starting really from the anatomy of the animal, understanding the restraint, understanding the, the environmental conditions, managing its accommodation. So that's taught in a classroom environment. We also have practical rooms and labo labs on site, which you'll see in a later video tonight. And some of the students would have a, the opportunity to, you know, practice their clinical skills. But the majority of their skills are developed while they're in a practice. OK, Siobhan, thanks for that introduction to the Level 2 programme. Now we're going to listen to a short video from Laura Hurst. Laura is a Level 3 uh, student uh, first year 
who will give us an insight into uh, her experience of the course to date. Hi, my name is Nora. I'm currently doing the Level 3 Veterinary Nursing course at Caffrey. I've been at Caffrey for just over two years now. Um, before this course, I did the Level 2 Animal Nursing Assistant, which is my veterinary care. did my GCSEs and my A-levels at school. At A-levels, I did Spanish, French and Biology, so it was a bit of a mix because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I always knew I wanted to do something that involved animals. Um, I did do a course before coming to Caffrey and it just kind of solidified that I wanted to get into a veterinary clinic. So I was lucky enough to get into a veterinary clinic um, that's also a training practice. So um, the level three veterinary nursing course, you need to be employed by a registered veterinary practice to complete the course. So I've been at my practice now for just over three years and I really enjoy the course. I think it's really um, relevant to what we do in practice. Um, it's also great to have teachers that are also in veterinary, so either veterinary nurses or veterinary surgeons, because I know also what it's like to be in a practice. Favourite module would probably be Diagnostic Principles, which is what we do in first year. So it's one of our first modules and um, enjoy doing lab work and doing x-rays when I'm in clinic. So it's just nice to be able to implement what you learn in Caffrey with your work. I think that's probably one of the best thing about it is the, it's a day release course. So everything that you learn in Caffrey is relevant to what you do in practice and we're able to put it into work when, when we're actually in work. Um, the teachers are really helpful. There's always extra materials if we need them and all PowerPoints usually have what we want for our assignments or our exams. Um, it's assignment and exam based so you kind of get to do both of them. More exams than assignments but um, we always have extra material if we need it and if we need help then the teachers are always there to help us. Well. Um, college, I'm sure for some people it's been a bit more challenging with COVID. Thankfully we've been able to be in class quite a bit the past couple of years. Um, probably the biggest issue was trying to still do practicals but teachers have been really helpful with putting us into smaller groups and we've still been able to get hands-on experience with the practical room that we have on campus which has x-rays and all the stuff that you can have in connect to practice on. We have microscopes as well, so it's nice to be able to get experience in here and then be able to implement it in practice. Um, Caffrey has been really good. I'm really excited to be able to become a registered veterinary nurse after finishing the course. Obviously, I'll be able to be a lot more helpful as there's only certain things that you can do if you're registered and it's just really great that we have this opportunity over here to become a registered nurse and I'm excited to go back into work and be registered and be able to be as much help as possible. Thanks to Laura who has given us a great insight into her experience of uh, the course to date. Siobhan, I'm going to turn to you again now in terms of the Level 3 uh, programme that you mentioned. Yes, Manus, we offer a Level 3 Diploma in Veterinary Nursing Companion Animals. That course is two and a half years long. Again, the students would attend and be taught one day a week. So depending on what year group they, the student would be in, they come into college on a, a specific day. So for example, this year, first years attend college on a Tuesday. The student then would be employed in a CAFRI approved training practice, and that would be on a full-time basis as a student nurse. So they're very much training while they work. Um, so that role um, is really a progression for some people from the level two. It's a very specific vocational course where they're training to join a professional mm -hmm. body. That body is the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, which holds the register for registered veterinary nurses. So that profession is regulated by the RCVS. Um, so the, the course, as I said, is two and a half years long and it covers a wide range of um, both clinical theory, legislative uh, skills, and underpin the knowledge that the nurse needs so that they can qualify as a registered veterinary nurse at the end of the two and a half years. 
So as I said, they spend one day on campus and then they will be employed in one of the CAFRI approved practices across Northern Ireland. Okay. When you say CAFRI approved course or uh, veterinary uh, surgeon practices, what do you mean? So CAFRI has 55 um, approved training practices and what that means is CAFRI has carried out an audit in that practice against the RCVS training standards. And what that means is that practice has the right variety of cases, um, species, resources, staff, equipment, that that nurse will be able to see the wide range of skills that they need to be signed off as competent and be able to do. Um, so I, as I've said at the start, the species that we would be training nurses to work with are the traditional pets, so dogs, cats, rats and guinea pigs. So the majority of those um, training practices would either be small animal specific yeah. or be a mixed practice, but they would have to carry a large caseload of small animals, which means they're seeing you know, a lot yeah. of pets in a given week that the nurse then can see a wide variety of species and skills um, that they need to sign off. So I, I couldn't go to any practice then, is no. what you're saying? No, you can't for the level three. The level two, you could approach any, vet, any veterinary practice mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland to support your training. Um, but not for the level three. It's very specific training and the end point is obviously to join that professional body which has quite high standards. That, so the, the training practice has to get the student the right exposure yeah, yeah. to the skills that they need to be signed off as a competent nurse. Okay, you mentioned the RCVS, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. What's their role in the level three programme? So the RCVS regulate the profession both of vets and nurses. Um, they regulate everybody involved in training nurses, so they regulate CAFRI. So CAFRI is a, an approved centre to deliver veterinary nurse training and subsequently then we approve the training practice. When the student joins the Level 3 programme, we enrol them as a student nurse with the RCVS. They must maintain uh, quite high standards in regards to their professionalism, their conduct, they have a code of conduct mm. that they have to follow and that's regulated through their student career but also then when they qualify they will join the register for registered veterinary nurses held by the RCVS and they must maintain that every year so the nurse must continue to do continuous professional development so that could be short courses or they could go on to develop a specialism in particular types of nursing um, so that, that RCVS, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, regulate all aspects of the training, but also the profession when the nurse is qualified. Okay. You mentioned at level two that there were no fees associated. Are there fees associated with the level three course? There is. There is some fees attached to the level three, and those fees are associated with the nurse um, registering to join the professional body, both as a student and as a qualified nurse. Students may also incur fees if they need to reset any exams and all nurses will ha uh, incur a cost to travel to GB, a college in England, where they would do their final practical exam at the end of the two and a half years. Okay, and a typical day then for a level three student coming in to the college, what would that entail? So as I said, the, the level three students come in one day a week. So at the minute, the first years are, are on campus on a Tuesday um, and other year groups are in on other days of the week. So the students would be predominantly based in a, a classroom initially where they're covering quite a bit of theory, may it be you know, science content associated with anatomy. So using the likes of the mannequins we have here tonight. Um, so a lot of legislation around their role, ethics, health and safety. Um, but as, there, as the course progresses, they get into the more practical nursing skills. So we would be demonstrating in our practical rooms, um, you know, best practice, mm -hmm. using the mannequins, positioning, um, getting to maybe sample taking blood from mannequins. Um, we don't have any live animals. We don't use any live animals on campus for the small animal veterinary nursing courses. Um, but the, the nurse will get a lot of exposure in practice to, our clinic, to the clinical skills that they will need. Also on campus, they would make use of the library and they do exams online. So again, they would be in the computer yeah. suites in some, in some days as well. Okay. Thanks again, Siobhan, for that there, that very useful uh, background to the Level 3 programme. We're now going to listen to another short video from Rosemary McColgan in terms of the facilities. Uh, we always pride ourselves on the excellent facilities that are integrated into the, all the courses and Rosemary is going to take us through that now. We offer a Level 2 Certificate in Veterinary Care Support course, 
aimed at students who wish to train as an auxiliary veterinary care assistant and a level 3 diploma in veterinary nursing. Both courses focus on the care and support of companion animals or common family pets. On campus, students have full access to the veterinary nursing centre, which mirrors aspects of their working environment in a veterinary practice. The Veterinary Nursing Centre contains x-ray equipment, anaesthetic equipment, an ultrasound machine and a surgical suite. Staff make use of a range of skeletons and anatomical mannequins to illustrate the anatomy of the companion animals which students will be learning about. The students also have access to the Greenmount Laboratories which have a range of microscopes, centrifuges and refractometers to carry out common veterinary tests. Students who are enrolled on the Level 2 or Level 3 course spend a considerable amount of time in their chosen veterinary practice. They will be working with a clinical team of nurses and vets in practice while spending one day a week on campus. The level of the course will determine what duties and clinical skills that can be taught to the student. Level 2 students will develop important auxiliary nursing skills to support the registered veterinary nurse and vet in practice. By working and learning on campus and in practice simultaneously, students get to put their skills into use every day in the veterinary practice. Level 3 student nurses work towards joining the professional register for veterinary nurses held by the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. To join the register, CAFRI Level 3 student nurses must demonstrate they have mastered the day one skills expected of any nurse who trains in the UK. These day one skills relate to the safe and effective care of small animals and ensure the highest standards of care are maintained within the profession. Such skills include safe working practices, maintaining an animal's accommodation, providing feed and water and carrying out basic nursing care. Level 2 students will also learn the anatomy of the companion animals they will be looking after in practice. Students will be shown the correct and safe methods of preparing and supporting the patient for investigative procedures such as endoscope, ultrasound and x-ray examinations. Students will learn important life-saving techniques and how they can support the veterinary team during life-saving procedures. All Level 3 student nurses focus on the essential day one core skills necessary to carry out safe and effective general practice nursing, support common procedures and treatments in cats, dogs, rabbits and guinea pigs. However, once qualified, nurses can specialise in various aspects of veterinary nursing, for example, orthopaedic or emergency nursing. I hope I have been able to show you CAFRI provides unique facilities bespoke for training those who wish to work within small animal veterinary care and nursing. The underpinning knowledge and practical skills taught on campus reinforce the time spent in a veterinary practice, ensuring students are fully trained, competent, safe practitioners in the profession. Thanks to Rosemary for that very insightful video in terms of the facilities that are used in the veterinary nursing uh, programme. Siobhan, again, in terms of uh, opportunities for, for students both on the Level 2 and the Level 3 programme, could you give me a wee bit of information in relation to that, please? Yeah, so students that do the Level 2 um, are normally entering the, 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 this vocation. So it's a really good course where they'll find out if this is the right career path. So at the end of that, young, that one year, we would probably have 50% of the students that really would like to progress. And they will then progress to the level two if they meet, or the level three, sorry, if they meet the entry requirements. So I would advise anybody to check the entry requirements for both courses if they do eventually mm -hmm. want to progress. Some students at the end of the, the level two are, are find a full-time employment as an animal nurse and assistant and they're very content with that role and uh, it's a very valuable important role in practice that's supporting the the veterinary clinical team so the level three course then for progression once the students complete that they actually are qualified as a registered veterinary nurse okay so there's no need for them to go on and do a degree in veterinary nursing which can sometimes be cause confusion both a degree in veterinary nursing and the level three diploma will result in the student becoming a registered veterinary nurse. So it's the same end point, it's two okay. different career mm -hmm. pathways. Once the nurses qualify, they obviously are training for a particular role in practice. Um, however, some of them do go back and train and do continuous professional development and maybe specialise in nursing exotic uh, animals. Some of them will go into maybe emergency nursing, orthopaedics, um, health, weight management. So there, there is a, a variety 
They can also maybe progress within the practice to head nurse. Some of them may then take on more responsibilities within the practice to do with rotas and staff mm -hmm. management. Yeah. Um, alternatively, some nurses obviously then come back to education. So we have nurses here at CAFRI that are, are training the next generation of nurses. So other people may go down the road of working for a feed company yeah. or pharmaceutical company as a, as a rep. So there is a wide range of careers beyond just yeah. the, the profession mm -hmm. of just training to, to do the clinical skills. So it is really important for people to, to see that as well as the nurse progress, as they progress in their career. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier on the level three programme, the importance of uh, an approved uh, veterinary practice. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some practices out there wondering how to become approved. Could you give me a wee bit of information on that, Siobhan, please? Normally what would happen is the practice would contact CAFRI, so the contact details are av available at the end or my email is available on the website. The practice would contact us, express an interest in training uh, veterinary nurses. We would then share with them the, the RCVS standards for training practices. So that lays out exactly what the practice would need in regards to equipment, how many cases per week they should be seeing, that type of thing. If a practice feels that they can meet that standard, we would then carry out an audit. And if we feel it's, it's, it meets the standard and we feel it's a suitable environment to train nurses, we would recommend approval. And that practice then would be affiliated to CAFRI to train mm -hmm. the level three nurses that would be studying at CAFRI. Okay, so just to be clear then, for the level two programme, uh, there's no requirement for an approved practice, but at level three there is? There is, yes. Okay, thanks for that, Siobhan. We're now going to turn to Vicky McAllister. Vicky is a recent graduate uh, from the programme, a level th the Level 3 programme, and she's going to tell us a wee bit about her career to date uh, and how she got there. Hi, everyone. My name is Vicky McAllister, and I'm a registered veterinary nurse at Vets for Pets Lisburn. I was able to achieve this job role after undertaking the Level 3 Diploma of Veterinary Nursing at Greenmount College, Caffrey. Veterinary nursing has been my dream job for a long time and it's not just cuddling puppies and kittens as everyone thinks, it's a whole lot more. My day-to-day -day life ranges from running nurse clinics for second vaccinations to assisting the vet with prepping the animals for surgery, carrying out radiology, taking blood samples, to also cleaning and providing appropriate accommodation for each patient and then on top of that comforting and reassuring the owners. A lot of people think veterinary nurses just need to be animal lovers, but you need to have a good level of customer care and be able to understand and help the owners in a sensitive manner. So why Caffrey? For me, I loved the opportunity it gave to be able to study and work at the same time. This meant that not only was I able to learn the theory, but I was able to put it into practice every day when I was in work. When you become an RVN, you have to be able to carry out day one skills. And working in a training practice as I went through the course gave me the confidence to ensure I knew exactly what was expected of me and that I felt confident carrying out the day one skills. I absolutely loved my time at CAFRI. It was three of the best years I've had in education. The veterinary nursing team were incredible and so supportive. Don't get me wrong, the course content is hard going and intense, but if you put in the effort and work with the team, you'll get through it. CAFRI provides amazing experiences such as class trips to the Enniskillen campus so you gain experience with horses, group sessions, lab practice and of course cuddles with Dexter and Blue who belong to one of the tutors and they are firm favourites with everyone. Louise who is a veterinary nurse and one of the tutors in CAFRI helped organise a project with Gap Africa for a group of students to go to South Africa and help out at a conservation reserve for two weeks. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity and has bonded our entire group for life. So attending CAFRI is so much more than just going to college. One piece of advice I would give to those who are thinking of attending CAFRI for the veterinary nursing diploma is to believe in yourself, push yourself and put in the work. Remember to use every resource CAFRI has on offer to help you along the way and you'll enjoy every second. Oh, and make sure to go to the Cyber Cafe where Donna makes a great cup of coffee. Thanks for listening. Thanks to Vicky for giving a background to her uh, career today. I uh, hope you found that there uh, helpful as well. Siobhan, a question I have and something I have an interest in as well. The animals that are studied on the programme, so you give me a wee bit of background to, to that as well, please. Um, across the two courses, they specialise only in the companion animal. So the traditional pets found in Northern Ireland, which would be dog, cat, rabbit and guinea pig. If people are interested in particular like equine nursing, that's a standalone course. 
um, which isn't available in, in Northern Ireland. The course doesn't cover farm animals because the role of the veterinary nurse isn't uh, isn't really available um, mm -hmm. to, to treat farm animals. So we only focus on those traditional pets. Mm -hmm. And in terms of experience coming on to the programme, both at level two and level three, what advice would you give there to, to students? The level two course requires no prior experience. Uh, um, however, the level three, we do require three months work experience in a veterinary practice. And it's very specific, the, the experience must be gained in a veterinary practice. Now, for that initial three months experience, it can be in any veterinary practice, and it could be a range of veterinary practices. Um, we just need to have seen that you understand the role of what the veterinary nurse does and have worked in that environment or volunteered for those three months. For those people that are really struggling, so a lot of the, the, the common queries I would get is I can't get any experience or I can't get ex you know, into a veterinary practice. What I would encourage anybody to do if they're, if they're at that stage where they want to apply to CAFRI but they can't get somebody to support their training would be I always recommend them to type up a CV for the applicant, so the interested person that wants to do the course, maybe not a parent or a family member, if they approach the veterinary practice, because these people, the veterinary practice wants to see somebody that potentially will make a valuable member of their team. So I would encourage the prospective student to make that initial contact. I know very difficult at the moment maybe to get into a veterinary practice, but maybe type up your CV, yeah. email it to them, follow it up maybe a few weeks later with a, a, a courte courtesy phone call. Um, be persistent, but be polite. They're very, very busy places. Uh, veterinary practice can be so. People that um, maybe go that extra mile or shows demonstrating something to that veterinary practice that they have the potential to make a very good animal nursing student or a veterinary nursing student. At the end of the day, um, all these people that work in veterinary practice must enjoy working with animals, but equally they must enjoy working with people. So every animal comes with yeah. an owner as well as working within a small team of people. So it's really important that people enjoy working in that kind of environment. So those are a few things that I would advise people to maybe work on. Um, the applications are now open from the 1st of October. Um, so they've plenty of time still to secure uh, a practice. Okay, Siobhan, that's an excellent advice and thanks for that. You've provided a lot of information uh, this evening. Where would you direct people to just to find out more? The, obviously, after tonight, they can watch back uh, th this on, on Facebook. There's also webinars available on, uh, on CAFRI. The website as well will have two dedicated pages covering the, the courses that we've covered, the entry requirements. There's also a list of the approved training practices for Level 3. There's also other uh, frequently asked questions, so hopefully we've answered quite a lot of them within that document. The other thing that's coming up um, over the next few weeks is campus tours. So students can go onto the website mm -hmm. and book uh, a small small group uh, will be provided with tours around the veterinary nursing facilities over the next few weeks. So again, those date, dates are available on the website now. Okay, thanks for that, Siobhan. Uh, I should say at this stage as well, this event, this event is live. So please continue to give us uh, your thumbs up uh, as we continue to work our way through uh, the virtual tour. Uh, the, course, the courses themselves in veterinary nursing aren't all built around the, the facilities in the veterinary nursing centre. Greenmount campus is much bigger than that there. And we're now going to take an opportunity for a tour around uh, the campus itself. And William Henry, who happens to be an agricultural student, is going to provide that now. My name is William Henry and I'm a first year student here in the Foundation Degree in Agriculture and Technology course. I would like to show you around and let you see what's on offer for students who choose to live on campus. The under 18 students live in either Boyd or Fulton Hall. The bedrooms in Boyd Hall are en suite and are cosy and comfortable while Fulton Hall has a single study bedrooms which are shared bathroom facilities for a small number of students. The over 18 students stay in the self-catering accommodation in the student village, either in one of the bungalows or a lodge. Around 12 students live in each of the lodges and three in each of the bungalows. The bedrooms in the lodges are all en suite and there's a shared kitchen, sitting room, laundry facilities. Every evening, students living in campus accommodation are looked after by the residential support team. These staff with the Student Representative Council arrange activities for the students like going to the cinema, ice skating, various sporting activities or outings to Belfast. 
There is a gym in Greenmount Resource Centre and Sports Hall as well. The residential support team also look after the safety and security of students when they are on site. The main place to eat on campus is the Manor Restaurant which is open throughout the day from 8 in the morning to 6 at night and provides a great range of meals. The Cyber Cafe which is in Greenmount Resource Centre also offers snacks and drinks from 10 in the morning so there's absolutely no excuse for anybody to go hungry. Most under 18 students have a cater card which their parents or guardians preload with money so you don't have to carry cash about which is very handy. One of the main places on campus for classes and recreation is the Greenmount Resource Centre or as we call it, the GRC. This is where most of the classrooms, lecture theatres and IT suites are. The student services manager is here too and can help with any queries or issues you may have. Also, this is where some of the residential support team are found in the evenings. The Cyber Cafe is also located in the GRC and serves food, which is also the main social hub for students to hang out. There's TVs, pool tables, football, as well as table tennis and computers to play games on. The core to any college is the library and I have to say, all the students love the newly refurbished library here at Greenmount. It has a great selection of relevant journals and books as well as an extensive collection of e-learning materials. The library is also a great place to study if you want just a bit of peace and quiet. Greenmount is only three miles away from the town of Antrim. It has everything you will need in terms of shopping, cafes, restaurants and entertainment and it is also around 30 minutes from Belfast. When you live on campus, it is so easy to make friends and there is a real sense of community. Living away from home has made me much more independent and I love the freedom of doing my own thing. I hope you enjoyed the tour and maybe I will see you here next year. Thanks to William uh, for that tour of the facilities, which hope, hopefully has given you a flavour um, for uh, the other side of, of Greenmount campus. Um, we just have a question in there from Josephine in relation to um, a school leaver, uh, 16 years of age, wanting to move on to level two. Siobhan, what advice would you give? So yes, Josephine, school leavers can apply um, to the level two. That's no problem at all. There's no prior work experience needed. Traditionally, the level two is a really good entry point, both for school leavers and also those that maybe are changing their career. So traditionally, we would get about a third of the students on the level two that are straight from school, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Another third would maybe be um, early 20s, maybe changing their, their career, or it's taken them that while to build up um, you know, understand what they, that this is the career path for them. So that level two course definitely would suit a school leaver. The level three, however, we traditionally do not get school leavers on. Um, for example, this year there would be only one school leaver and in previous years we, we would have none. Um, and the reason being that it is quite a challenging undertaking to be working full time um, and then attending college one day a week. Also, there, there may be uh, a need to maybe be able to drive because there's, you could be working a 12-hour shift as a student mm. nurse. So that maybe isn't that attractive to an immediate school leaver or may find very difficult to get a training practice um, straight from school. So uh, I would always suggest they really do consider the level two as an, an entry point because it's one year well invested. They get a year's work experience, a qualification, and it really confirms if this is the right career and environment that they want to be working in. Okay. Thanks for that, Siobhan, that's very helpful. At this stage, and as we come near the end of our virtual evening, again, I would ask you to give us a, a thumbs up, and if you have any further questions you'd like to pose, please be sure to post them for us. I would just like to mention at this stage uh, the student support officer. Now, veterinary nursing uh, students normally are only in college one day a week, but they will have the opportunity to use a wide range of facilities, uh, the library, uh, the IT suite, but also to remember that there is a student support officer to help and advise students with any particular issues or queries that they might have. Um, for me at this stage then really what I would like to try and do with all the information Siobhan has pr provided is to try and recap uh, through the various programmes. Siobhan, you covered the level two and the level three, three programme in a lot of detail. The level two programme is a one-year programme 
there's no fees associated with it, but it gives students a, a good insight into veterinary nursing and it allows them to make a decision on whether it's the course for them going forward. The Level 3 programme, which is a diploma in veterinary nursing, is a two and a half year programme. There are associated fees in relation to exams and travel expenses to complete exams. But at the end of that programme, and it's recognised by the Royal College of Veterinary Nursing, is a proper career as such in uh, veterinary nursing going forward. Um, so at this stage, really, uh, and we, as we come to the end uh, of our programme, I would like to thank you, Siobhan, for helping me out this evening and providing all the information that you have done. Uh, also, in relation to the students, I helped out both Vicky McAllister and Laura Hurst, and also to Rosemary McColgan and her team, and to William Henry for giving us a great insight into both the programmes and to the facilities uh, at Greenmount campus. So at this stage, uh, I'd like to say thank you and good evening. I should have, of course, mentioned the production team as well for bringing this all together uh, as they wave at me in the background. Uh, so thank you and good evening. And I'm going to leave you, leave you with a short video on uh, Greenmount campus, uh, which is a college uh, that cares. Caffrey staff, supporting you to achieve your potential. Hello, I'm the Greenmount Librarian and I manage our learning resources in the library. The library was refurbished a couple of years ago and provides a welcoming place to study. Students love to come here to get books, journals or e-learning materials. It's also a great place to research on your own or in groups. As Simon due dates approach, the library can get really busy, but I'm always on hand to offer support. As a student support officer, I help students who have specific learning needs. I try to make the transition from school to college life as smooth as possible and have the support in place to help them complete their qualification. I usually meet the students before they start their course and agree a bespoke programme of support. They may need some extra time during exams or the allocation of support tutors. I am also the leading safeguarding officer for CAFRI and work in partnership with all staff to ensure that learners receive a high level of pastoral care. Hi, I'm the Student Services Manager at Greenmount Campus. Along with the residential support team, I'm responsible for managing student accommodation and providing pastoral care to all students. We are available in the evenings and overnight to make sure that everyone stays safe and well. We organise a weekly programme of evening activities to help you make new friends and settle into college life. Your welfare and safety is our priority.